A man able to instantly remember and interpret in the most incandescent way possible any work from Bach and Wagner to Bartok. If you can imagine that mind ingeminated with the most general and selfless heart that can exist in a man with a noble and beautiful look, with a romantic face always inspired by a creative genius inside him, whether he speaks, teaches, conducts, plays the violin or the piano and especially when composing, the whole picture still wouldn't be complete. A humorous man as well as a philosopher with deep thinking, familiar with the languages and literature in Europe and England, a man with the most noble forms of chivalry and love for his native land. This is the teacher I had since the age of 11, says Yehudi Menuhin. Continuously for two years, then again for five years, and then intermittently over the years in which we were given to be both in life. Although I'm now older than Inescu when he died, he says, and although I have not seen this overwhelming man for more than 30 years, he remains to be the most extraordinary human being, the greatest musician and the strongest influence ever exerted on me. George Inescu is considered to be one of the most important Romanian composers. He was born in Liven, Botoshan in 1881, and his talent manifested in many ways. He was a conductor, teacher, he played the violin and the piano, and most importantly, he was an amazing composer. He started playing the violin when he was only four, and soon he started taking lessons from a famous fiddler called Nicolae Chioru. He made his first compositional attempt at the age of five or six. At seven, he started his journey towards a faraway destination, his professional study of music with mentor Professor Edward Codella. Between 1888 and 1894, he studied in, at the conservatory in Vienna. At the age of eight, he had his debut as a violinist and was called by the Viennese press as the Romanian Mozart. He continued his studies in Paris under the mentorship of Martin Pierre Marsic, a violin, and André Jadalj for counterpoint, Jules Masset and Gabriel Fauré for composition. His colleagues in Paris include Maurice Ravel, Florent Schmidt, Charles Coles, and Theodore Foch. His exceptional debut, thanks to his protector Elena Bibescu, takes place on February 6, in 1898 at the Cologne concert in Paris with Poema Romana No. 1. Later, this performance was recalled by Inescu to be one of the most emotional moments in his life. He characterized it as a far evocation of familiar images from his native country. When he returned to Romania, his success was already national. The 17-year-old musician was already giving concerts at the Pelish Castle. He was admired by Queen Elizabeth and he was also referring to her as his other mother and he was calling him his spiritual son and composed seven leaders inspired by her poems. In 1936, on March 13, the premiere of the opera Oedipe on a libretto by Edmund Flegg took place in Paris with a resounding success to the audience. A few years back, however, Enescu was more and more obsessed about the idea of writing an opera. He said to Bernard Gavotti in their interview that he dedicated uninterrupted time to working at Oedip during the summer. In an interview from 1931, Enescu admitted that he tried to, take, to make the orchestration of the opera as simple as possible so that the main character, Oedip, can use all the power. This also reflects Enescu's obsession with the polyphonic and heterophonic textures in which each melodic line has to be clearly distinct. Moving away from his works to his personal life. In 1934, Enescu was writing to violinist Sandu Albu. I am finally living how I dreamed. I can only be with my scores for as long as I like and perform only a couple months a year. I think I deserve this after 30 years of useless efforts. Exactly when he was writing this, he was actually trying to overcome increasingly difficult times in his life. One morning in 1933, Enescu visited the Menuhin family to tell them that he will have to be away to Vienna or Bucharest due to very important personal issues, which came very sudden. The young Yehudi 
wasn't told the real reason at the time. However, he understood it was about Enescu's wife, Mariuka. From Enescu's correspondence at the time, Mariuka was very ill, and it wasn't something that could be openly discussed. The most plausible conclusion is that it could have been caused by a psychologically difficult period after which his wife was never the same, acting more and more difficult. Therefore, apart from Menescu's love for music, his biggest love and happiness in life was fading. In 1946, in April, he performed multiple concerts in New York and sent almost $20,000 to Romania to help the less fortunate children. Shortly after, the Romanian King Mihai was forced to leave his reign and the communism took over Romania. His relationship with the new regime could be characterized as a very cold politeness. In reality, they tried to make Enescu senator, offered him many invitations and gifts, but only with a big prize. Dictators only love dead idols because they cannot talk. Enescu tried not to show too much of his opinions in terms with the regime in order to not put his friends and family members in danger, but his decision of staying in Paris was clearly stating his views. All the land and work that he did those years, and that was in Romania, was expropriated, and Enescu was forced to earn his living from concerts and recitals again, while his health was degrading and he was deeply suffering. His financial and health situation were straining him, as well as Mariuka, his wife, who only knew how to irrationally spend his earnings. Enescu's day on his bed were absolutely miserable, as his wife Mariuka didn't seem to care about him anymore. Acting absolutely insane and grotesque, he lived by himself with his dog in Hotel Atala near Champs-Élysées. He was often visited by friends and admirers. He would always be offered help, but he was too humble to accept it. I believe that Enescu, with his God-given talent, was one of the most important geniuses. And having this mind, his creations are painfully limited, but most surely some of the most beautiful ones to ever exist.